the nervous system and its most important parts, the brain and the spinal cord, which we call central nervous system, consist of billions of nerve fibers and nerve cells. Each nerve cell produces nerve fibers and contacts other nerve cells to build up neuronal circuits in which the neuronal functions run. During development, these nerve fibers grow over long distances, for instance, from the brain to the lower part of the spinal cord. This growth should be re-enacted after a spinal cord injury, and we would call this regeneration. The spinal cord runs from the brain stem down our vertebral column in the back of our body. All kinds of sensory information from the skin, from the joints, the muscles, the intestines reach the spinal cord and through the spinal cord the brain. In turn, the brain generates motor commands which run down the spinal cord to the spinal motor neurons and from there to the muscles where they generate the movements. These millions of nerve fibers in the spinal cord are interrupted and degenerate in case of spinal cord injuries. Injuries in the cervical spinal cord produce tetraplegia injuries in the lower part of the spinal cord, paraplegia, which is only uh, affecting the legs. To recover the lost functions after a spinal cord injury, the following possibilities exist. As shown on the right side of this figure, Fibers which have remained intact in incompletely injured patients can sprout a new branch. This would be the number one mechanism which is shown here. And this new branch can sort of take over uh, the target, for instance, a motor nerve fiber in the lower spinal cord, which has lost its input due to the injury. There's also the possibility that the relays form uh, via so-called interneurons or proprio-spinal neurons. This is the second possibility. And the third and most elegant one would be that the injured nerve fiber regrows a long new fiber and reaches its former target uh, nerve cell or target region again. The problem in spinal cord injury now is that this process of long distance regrowth and regeneration does not take place spontaneously. Interestingly, there is a fundamental difference with regard to the capacity of nerve cells to regenerate their lesioned nerve fibers between the brain and the spinal cord, which form the so-called central nervous system, and the nerves in the periphery of our body, the so-called peripheral nervous system. If a peripheral nerve is injured, it can regrow over long distances, even centimeter distances. And this is used in uh, surgery, for instance, if a nerve in a finger or an arm is injured in an accident, let's say, it can regrow and function, motor as well as sensory functions can come back. This regrowth does not take place for nerve fibers in the spinal cord. And this is why the spinal cord injury leads to functional impairment, for instance, paraplegia, which persists lifelong. One 
important difference between peripheral nerves and brain and spinal cord are the ensheathing cells which ensheath and isolate every single nerve fiber. The cell type in the peripheral nerves is called Schwann cell and this cell is highly conducive to nerve fiber regeneration and supports regeneration. In the spinal cord and the brain, the ensheathing cell is a different cell type. It's called oligodendrocyte. And we have found a long time ago in my research laboratory that these oligodendrocytes and the sheaths that they produce around the nerve fibers, the so-called myelin sheath, inhibit nerve fiber growth and regeneration. The different properties of peripheral nerves on the one hand and the central nervous system on the other hand with regard to nerve fiber regeneration can be nicely shown in tissue culture. Here nerve cells are cultured on a plastic uh, culture dish and with the appropriate uh, culture media and growth promoting factors they grow, regenerate and grow nerve fibers, so-called neurites, uh, overnight. If these cells are plated on an extract of peripheral nerves, the fibers are even longer than on the plastic uh, surface. If, however, and this is shown on the right side of the picture, if the nerve cells are cultured on an extract of spinal cord or brain, or on this myelin from spinal cord and brain, these are these sheaths of nerve fibers. Nerve fibers are very short and often no nerve fibers are produced at all. We used these types of cell culture assays to ask the question why there is this inhibition of nerve fiber growth in the central nervous system. And we found after a long series of biochemical and cell biological studies that proteins exist which are active inhibitors of nerve fiber growth. Among these proteins, one, which we called NOGO-A, is a particularly potent inhibitor of nerve fiber regeneration. NOGO-A is a large membrane protein with specific domains. It sits in the membrane of oligodendrocytes. This is shown on the graphical representation on the lower left and it interacts with other membrane proteins which sit in the cell surface membrane of the growing nerve fibers. There are a number of so-called NOGO receptors. These are the interaction partners of NOGO in the neuronal membrane and these NOGO receptors then generate intracellular signal cascades which in the end inactivate the movement machinery of the growing nerve fiber. This movement machinery is largely based on a fibrillar protein called actin and these actin filaments uh, pull the growing nerve fiber through the tissue or over the cell culture dish. On the right side of the picture, such a growing nerve fiber is shown. It has this typical enlargement at the end of the fiber with these so-called lamellipodia and philopodia. These are tentacle-like structures which are very motile due to the actin cytoskeleton. And if this nerve fiber would now contact NOGO A or an oligodendrocyte which contains NOGO A in its membrane, all this movement machinery would collapse and the movement would stop.
a key step in the investigation of the regeneration inhibitory actions of NOGO A and the central nervous system tissue was the finding that this growth inhibitory activity of this protein NOGO A can be abolished by so-called antibodies. So we produced antibodies against NOGO A and tested them in cell culture assays. On the right side of the picture, a clump of nerve cells is shown on the top uh, panel, which are unable to grow nerve fibers because they are in contact with spinal cord myelin containing NOGO A. In the lower picture, an antibody against NOGO A has been added, a so-called neutralizing antibody, and one can see that dozens of nerve fibers have grown out of this clump of nerve cells. In the middle graph, this is quantitated, where one sees good neurite outgrowth, a high score of nerve fiber growth on a substrate culture dish, which is coated with laminin, a very conducive uh, substrate for nerve fiber growth. However, if the culture dish is coated with spinal cord myelin, the outgrowth is very restricted and the good outgrowth is restored if the spinal cord myelin is treated with anti-NOGO A antibodies. To test the effect of anti-NOGO antibodies which should promote regeneration of injured fibers in the spinal cord after injury in animals. Adult rats were treated with these antibodies after an incomplete spinal cord injury. These injuries disrupt about two-thirds of the spinal cord. The rat is impaired in its movement, but not completely paraplegic. The right side of the picture shows how these rats can climb on ladders. They do this very well and reach a maximum of 18 points in the intact condition before the spinal cord injury. Seven days after the spinal cord injury, they are unable to walk on this ladder. Their scores are very low. The open columns represent a group of animals which are treated with an inactive control antibody. Their movement capacity on the ladder does not recover. The black columns and the gray columns are two groups of animals which were treated with two different function blocking anti NOGO A antibodies. They recover about half of their original dexterity in crossing the ladder, so a very good but incomplete level of recovery. We then analyzed the spinal cords of these animals anatomically. One can see the injury in the middle of this reconstruction in the lower part of the picture on the left side and one sees how tracts come from the brain and end at the lesion site. If we count the fibers which grow around the lesion and down the spinal cord the number of fibers in the control inactive antibody treated group of rats is very low. In contrast, the antinogo antibody treated animals have long fibers which cover in this picture up to half a centimeter distance in the spinal cord. This is true long distance regeneration which is not seen 
in the control condition and depends on the neutralization of this growth inhibitory protein, NOVO A. The key question then was whether these in vitro findings can be translated to an in vivo situation, for instance, in spinal cord injured mice or rats. In order to translate these findings towards a new therapy for spinal cord injured patients, a small number of experiments in a species which is closely related to humans, macaque monkeys, were conducted. The monkeys had small defined spinal cord injuries which inactivated their hand control on one side of the body. All the other functions of the monkeys were intact. When we tested hand function in terms of take the monkey taking raisins out of small wells or opening drawers to take out small pieces of banana, we could see that the dexterity of finger movements collapsed after the spinal cord injury and recovered only to a low degree. This is shown on the left side of the picture in the lower graph. If the monkeys were treated with anti-NOGO-A antibodies, the same collapse after the spinal cord injury, this is time zero in the graph on the right side, the same collapse of the finger movement was observed, but the recovery which occurred over two to four weeks after the injury in the presence of the antinogo antibody was almost complete such that these antibodies could use their hands and finger movements as if they would not have a spinal cord injury. Again, an anatomical uh, study showed that in the spinal cords of the control antibody treated monkeys, the nerve fibers stopped growing at the lesion site, whereas in the antinogo antibody treated animals, uh, fibers could be seen uh, to uh, grow around the lesion and down the spinal cord for long distances. With these findings, the field was ready for translation towards a therapy in medicine. An antibody against human Novo A was produced and this antibody is now being tested for its efficacy to improve the functional outcome of tetraplegic patients in the Niski trial. The development of novel therapies in medicine always follows several different steps so-called phases of clinical trials. The first phase for antinogo A antibodies for spinal cord injury was the testing of the dosage of antibodies, the application of the antibodies to the spinal cord, and the exclusion of side effects. More than 50 paraplegic and tetraplegic patients were treated with antinogo antibodies in a European clinical network several years ago to exclude side effects and find the appropriate dose. On the basis of this knowledge, the 
so-called phase two of the clinical trial will now investigate the efficacy of the antibody treatment to improve the outcome of tetraplegic patients after severe spinal cord injuries. This is the NISKI trial. Only tetraplegic patients up to one month after the accident or injury can be included in the NISKI trial. After initial examinations, they will receive injections of antibody or placebo over four weeks into the lumbar spinal canal. These injections are very well tolerated and do not cause side effects. Trial participants are then tested regularly for arm hand functions, motor functions and sensory functions in general all over the body but also for pain, spasticity, respiration and bladder functions and quality of life in general. We will follow these patients up to six months after the accident. At present, more than 130 patients will be included in the trial which will take the clinical consortium of 14 clinics in six European countries about two years to complete.